Hey everybody, I want to start this video off by showing you guys my setup because uh, I don't think I've ever shown it on Twitch or YouTube before. Also, Copper is here. Everybody say hi to Copper. Um, but anyways, I also wanted to talk about a product that Ben Q sent me. They, they sent an email to me and asked me to do a little review. And I was excited to do it because I've used the Ben Q Monitor for years, like hell when I was starting YouTube, you know. And I think it's a great product, so I was like, sure, I'll, I'll talk about uh, this little light bar they sent me. And it's it's actually really, really good. Um, so you guys can kind of see how strong it is here. Obviously, I have my overhead light off, I mean on. So if I turn that off, you can kind of see it in better detail. Copper is very fascinating, fascinated by the light. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> kind of blinded him. But either way, uh, it's a great product to me because I feel like it doesn't take up any desk space like a lamp would. Uh, I used to have a lot smaller of a desk and I wouldn't have been able to fit any extra stuff on it. So this would have been great for me then. So if any of you have smaller desks, it's great for like reading. Like uh, I've got some like college books and when I'm studying by my computer, this actually is super, super helpful because it doesn't have screen glare in case I need research for on my screen as well as while I'm reading. So it's really good for college students, I feel like. Um, just good in general. Copper seems to like that book. But uh, you can also mess with the temperature here, temperature of light, have a warmer and cooler light. So this would be a warmer light, I believe. If I go back, it doesn't really come out on my phone, but it comes out a lot more in person. But I don't, if anyone can explain to me warmer and colder temperatures for light, I would happily listen because to me, it's mainly just the color, but I know that there's more of a use for it. Also, there is an auto dimmer here. Now this is the negative about the product I do have to say, because to me, it doesn't seem like the auto dimmer works. Like if I have it like that with it on and I turn on the light, it doesn't dim. And I looked into other reviews and it seems like the dimmer doesn't really work for many other many people. But besides that, even without the dimmer, it seems pretty pretty great to me. Anyways, uh, you guys, if you want to check it out, it will be in the description. Let's continue on with the Fafnir video. Hello everyone on YouTube. We're going to be playing a Fafnir game today. I'm actually going to pop a skin booster here. Where is it? A skin booster. That way we can use the Fafnir skin, the new one. Give in to your Normally, I would absolutely buy a skin like this, but I find that I already have my favorite Fafnir skin, which is Diamond Fafnir, as well as the Leprechaun one, Pot of Gold. So as cool as this skin is, I don't feel like dropping 2,000 gems or whatever for a guaranteed uh, roll for it. Oh, whoops. So I do think I have found some Fafnir strategy. I forget if I already recorded a Fafnir game for Season 7, but... I'll be repeating a little bit of it. Um, I think at the beginning, you kind of need to decide your risk of whether you're going to be invaded or not. If you don't think you're going to be invaded, like I don't think I'm going to be invaded by a Freya. Then I'm going to start at blue buff and not go Mage's Buster. I'm just going to go straight into Bancroft's. Because Fafnir desperately needs mana. And because I get blue buff, I don't really need Mage's Blessing. And I'm just rushing to get my build online. I actually took this idea from a comment on YouTube. That suggested I just rush Bancroft's because I got blue buff anyway, so it was really smart. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to be invaded by Freya, so I think I'm safe to take this. If your opponent invades you when you're playing Fafnir and you don't get blue buff, you are in a really bad situation. Because not only can you like not clear the wave, but you'll run out of mana and they can take all the buffs on the map. So getting that blue buff is really important. Which makes me a little sad, because they removed Hand of the Gods from uh, Duel. So even if I wanted to go Hand of the Gods for Secure, I can't. That's okay. Just gonna clear the wave, go clear minis. Heal up a little bit. This skin's pretty cool. They're doing like the 7 Deadly Sins, which is awesome. And I- what? Oh man, this skin's what? Called Wrath? Something like that? It's kind of interesting that they didn't give Greed to Fafnir, but... It kind of makes sense. Sometimes high res likes to make skins that are the different than the personality of the regular character. That way, if somebody likes playing Fafnir, but they don't like his whole greedy style, they like 
I guess this style of skin, it attracts them to the character as well. Which makes sense to me. Like, like with the upcoming Susano skin, right? I have no interest in playing Susano. I don't like any of his skins. But with them adding uh, Zuko for a skin for him, it makes me want to play him because I love After Our Last Airbender. I'll upload some Susano gameplay when that comes out. And um, I actually kind of enjoy playing Susano. I just don't like his character. So by playing as Zuko instead, that seems very fun to me. That's always cool. All right, we can afford Bancrofts, which is good. Again, Daphne is all about that late game. Can't do too much in the early. You do have kill potential with the alt, but it's mainly saved for uh, when you have a guaranteed kill or to get out. Like, I could alt when she's alting, and then she wouldn't be able to fire all four shots. Really good to use as, like, an Aegis. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Um, she's at a quarter health down. I have kill potential, except that she has her ult, so I don't want to ult. I don't want to ult until she ults, because then I can't get the kill. Because if I ult, then she ults, and I can't really kill her unless I dive super far, and that's not worth right now. Having the lead as Fafner is always really good, though. I'm almost tempted to not pick up this red buff because I think I need blue buff more. I'm just going to take it for the XP, I think. XP and gold. I mean, it's not like I can pick it up anyways. I have speed buff. Yeah, because our mana sustain is horrible right now. All right, let's go back. Level up our three. We are going to be building into uh, cooldown boots. After desperately relies on cooldowns. The more cooldowns you have, the... I mean, you obviously get your abilities faster, but since the ultimate's only for a limited duration, you get to use the abilities in the ultimate more, which is great. The abilities in the ultimate are really, 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 really good. I'm so excited when Cthulhu comes out. I can't wait to play him in Duel. I think he's going to be one of my favorites. Timing on that blue buff. I wonder if she's gonna go Typhons. Typhons is good on Freya since she gets so much base life still. I almost have uh, three stars on Fafnir too. I was looking at it in the pick screen. Right now I have over 3,000 worshippers on Fafnir, but I almost have 4,000, which is really cool. My goal is to get Fafnir to pass my Ho Yi, because I used to be a stinky Ho Yi main back in season two, and I played Ho Yi like nonstop. They got 5,000 worshippers on Ho Yi. So, passing Ho Yi with Fafnir would be great. But yeah, when the Avatar Last Airbender Pass comes out, I'll probably make a video on each, uh, each skin, most likely. I just absolutely love the series. Anyone that has not watched it, I would recommend. Enjoyable by anyone. Now, she's probably going to go Lifestyle Boots if she's going to go into Typhons. Because then that'll give her so much power. I'm surprised they haven't nerfed Typhons yet, but hey, I guess it's fine. I'm actually going to take quite a bit of damage here if I don't shoot. Never mind. Nice thing about Fafnir all is you actually get mana back. 
when you ult. So I was low on mana there, but now I have mana again. We're not going to kill, but I can probably do a little bit of poke. Eight seconds. She's out of mana, she can't stay. Place our ward in case we uh, she tries to come over here and stop us. This time I can pick this up. Because I'll have uh, mana shoes. To give me more mana and more sustain. I don't have a speed buff on me this time. Alright, so let's take this back, finish our mana shoes. I forgot that I should be using the voice pack. That's a funny. <laughs> That's a funny woohoo. That's great. Wait, so is this skin greed? I thought it was a wrath. Maybe it is greed. I'd have to read the title again. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Because why would I have that voice line if it wasn't wrath, right? Obviously, when I upload this video, I'll know, but. I thought it was Wrath. It'll be a wealthy god. I'm pretty sure it's Greed. Pretty sure it is Greed after all. I could have sworn it was Wrath when they first came out with it. Okay, we should be able to kill her here, as long as I don't miss. Okay, I definitely hit her when she was coming down the ground with my three, but it doesn't matter. I hit her with my one. Good stuff. I use my abilities and untransform. It's usually a good idea to untransform right after getting a kill, because your ultimate doesn't come off cooldown until you actually untransform. So if you stay in the dragon, you're actually holding off your next ultimate, essentially. In other game modes, not so much, because there's always something you can do. Whether it be your teammates take objectives and stuff. Oops. Ooh, she might take my uh, tower if I'm not careful here. She is skipping defense, which is pretty good for me. Ow. Well, I should have waited for my two, because now the archers are not dead. It's a bad idea to stay, but with my alt up so soon, with full Bancroft's passive, I can't help but feel the inner greed of the dwarf inside me. And I have beads up. I feel like this is a decent opportunity. She is full health now, though. So let's see. She has no mana. The inner greed inside me was right. Ah, I love being a greedy player. I love it, love it, love it. Being greedy is fun. It may not always be ideal, but it's definitely fun. Can't deny that. Alright, now we're getting back. I have almost 4,000 gold. Very cool. Get Divine Rune because she has so much lifesteal. And we can either get Sunder, Blink, or Sprint. Decisions. I'll just... I don't know. Link's probably really good. Link 1 alt is always a good combo. That way you're right next to them when you alt. The only problem with that is uh, she can obviously counter alt. Then we just leap after her. I still think it's a good idea. 
Thorns obviously comes to mind. Um, yeah, Thorns would be good as well. Both both are good options. I think with my playstyle, Blink works better though. Did you get any defense yet? Nope. We do not have uh, our ultimate yet, so we cannot fight. No potentials in our ult. Very rarely will Fafkin get kills without his ult. What? Did my three not do damage? I s they fixed in patch notes. They've said like four times that they fix. Oh, Fafkin's three doesn't do damage at close range. I swear that didn't do damage. Maybe it did. Did it? If I press T? I don't know. It might have there, but I know that that bug still happens. Is that by 3 max? I'm pretty sure it should have stolen it. Or maybe I missed? It's possible that my targeter was missed. That rule out all the possibilities until I look back at the footage. It'll be obvious looking back at the video whether like what happened doesn't matter too much though now she's getting defense most likely a shoguns Ooh, is she gonna go for demon king or is she just warding it i think she's just warding it yeah she just put a ward on it which means i can get a sentry I was looking at how many wards she had out of her hand, so because I saw she had two here and only one when she came back, it's super obvious that she uh, put one there. What do I want next? Chronos Pennant? Um, that Chronos Pennant's gonna be, bring me 40%, which will overcap me when I get Power Potion, but when I sell Boots, it'll be okay. A little unlucky that I lost Tower my I didn't lose, I didn't leave uh, base fast enough. Man, I hate it when I stutter. Also, I'm hoping the mic quality is slightly better. I got a program voice meter, which allowed me to change a lot of my audio settings, and hopefully it sounds better. I'm not entirely sure. Ooh. How fast is this coming up? Not for a little bit. For my one. She's gonna all. And when she comes back down, we get her. She does have these in Asia, though, so she should be fine. Oh. Little unfortunate. Wait, hold on. A little unfortunate for me or for you? Come on. <laughs> oh, I missed. Run. Run, Fafnir. Oh, she's healing. Oh, God. I can cover so much distance by just blinking and leaping like across the map. Not quite as far as I wanted, though. Alright, so I'm tempted to get a Pestilence, but that might be too much defense. Um, just because more anti-heal. Toxic Blade doesn't work in Fafnir and Dragon form. What else would be a good idea? Also, she got a sentry, so she's going to counter ward me. Rod of Tehuti would be okay. Hmm. This. Soul Reaver. Let's go with the rod. Rod's pretty good. Gives tons of damage for Fafnir.
Okay, I didn't get a rugs last time, which kind of sucks, but whatever. that damage. I had my beads ready in case she uh, banished me, so we're absolutely fine. Untransform, because we want our alt next time we fight. Now we push. Push minions. Okay, I actually love this skin because of the voice pack. I might actually get it after all. Yeah, I actually love the voice pack for this. And actually, the more I use this, the more I'm playing this game, the more I'm actually liking the effects as well. Especially the ultimate. The way the wings glow and everything is really cool. I might get it after all. I'll have to think about it. For now, I'm perfectly happy with using my Factor Diamond, though. Disarm her, run. How about ult? She's got to back off. I can do tons of damage to uh, Titan. But why is she still here? Oh, I could have killed her. That makes me sad. I thought she was going back to base. I could have easily killed her there. I have 30 seconds on my ult, so this is worth staying. I just need to have my bees ready. Uh oh. Okay, we're getting our cooldowns back. Fine. It's not fine, it's not fine, it's not fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. fine. Oh, as greedy as I am, I wanted to go back on in on that, but I couldn't. She's gonna get red buff, I think. Oh wait, I can counter ward this. Also, one of my favorite fun facts about Fafnir is his little golden pouch on his back. It glows the more gold Fafnir has. So right now I have over a thousand gold, so it's glowing maximum. It's hard to see with the buff. But when I when I spend all my gold, like when I buy Rod of Tutti, you'll see that it actually uh, glows less. So you can kind of see how much gold Fafnir has in hand by that. Is that important? Not really. I mean, you know the extra protections he has. That was really bad. Whatever. That was a really bad engagement. We should honestly just back. Let's just back at Rod of 2D. That way we can guarantee take our Phoenix. Because right now, if we stay, I think we're going to be too low when her, her Phoenix actually comes up. Ooh, she got Shaman. I mean, Ring of the Cat. There's no way she doesn't get to Typhons, right? I think I do have to sell boots for pestilence. I don't really have that much pen, but she only has shogun, so her protections aren't that much. Flat pen would be nice. On top of uh, divine rune, I mean. But one also reduces protections, which is very nice. Alt. Oh my god, the shred! She, she even ages that. She did everything she had to, except I think she needed to run earlier. But that's late game factor, man. Absolutely love it. Yeah, when Season 7 started, I was having a really hard time on Fafnir because of uh, how bad his early game was and then how much farm-oriented this, uh, this map is. But now I'm okay with him. I still struggle against early game characters that farm buffs hard. Freya doesn't do that as much, so I was able to come online. But maybe I'll try to record another Fafnir game sometime, showing how he does against those types of gods, because I definitely struggle way more against... I mean, Boxer, I started banning. I used to never ban Boxer, but with the Golden Blade buff, I, I've been banning him. Um, Set, maybe? Would Set be a good example? I don't know. But just, just early game gods at that farm a lot. Either way, I appreciate you guys watching. We're still in Diamond 5. Here are the stats if you'd like to see them, as well as the builds. And I'll see you guys later.